Hello. Today I want to talk to you about metering, specifically metering with our film cameras, how we can use it as a tool to get the picture that we're actually trying to get. So first I'll start with what a meter is. A meter is uh, like a little calculator inside of your camera that measures the amount of light entering your lens and calculates what the best aperture and shutter speed combination would be to get a properly exposed image. Now, first you have to know that you have a meter in your camera. If your camera is very old, maybe like my Hasselblad that I think is from the 50s, it doesn't have a meter built in. But my Olympus cameras that tend to all be 70s and 80s models, definitely something from the 80s, 90s should have a meter in it. So if you have a meter in your camera, I want you to be able to use it to get the best pictures possible. So the, meter, the way the meter works, um, and this is a, a, a kind of a blanket statement because modern cameras are way more advanced. Um, my, uh, I have a couple Canon film cameras from the 90s that are, have very advanced metering systems in it. But I wanna talk about the basic averaging meter, um, like something like this will have. What that means is whatever it can see through the lens, which is what you can see through your viewfinder, it's measuring all of that light and coming up with an average to get you a proper exposure. Now, what does that mean though? If you have a scene like this, where maybe two thirds of the scene are very bright because I've got a window behind me, and one third of the scene is me, which is in shadow compared to the background, an average might not actually work. Um, if you remember averages from grade school, middle school, if you have 90% of one thing and that other 10% is an outlier, it's gonna really skew your average one way or another. One thing we can do to understand how the meter is going to measure the scene is one, to understand that it's a reflective meter. What that means is it's measuring the light reflecting off your subject. So you need to understand how that interacts a little bit with color. You'll often see metering um, described as a scale from black to white. Well, we're not always shooting black and white and not everything we shoot is black and white. The reason we use that black to white scale is to remind us that black is black because it absorbs light, white is white because it reflects it. Um, but in a regular scene, uh, a yellow wall that's in sunshine is reflecting a lot more light than a tree trunk in the shade. So when we're looking at our scene, we have to look at not only what the light sources are, if the sun or a light bulb is in our shot, but what is reflecting light and what is absorbing light. The other thing we want to look at is how much is there of each. Um, if I'm shooting a very bright, uh, let's go back to that, maybe a yellow building in the sun. It's reflecting tons and tons of light. Is the subject that yellow building or is my subject maybe one dark area? Maybe there's a black door on that yellow building. Do I want to meter for that? So we need to look at the scene and understand what lighting conditions are present in our image that will skew an average reading. So what the meter looks like in your camera, some cameras have more like a ruler across the bottom, across the side with a zero setting or a correct setting, and then maybe plus or minus for the too dark, too bright uh, kind of settings. Um, some just have a needle that points right at what the correct shutter speed or aperture should be. Now, if you, so to speak, obey and set your settings to get the, the, what the camera thinks is correct. If you have a scene that really is uh, a, a perfect balance of light and dark, you'll probably get a great image. But there's gonna be conditions where we may want to override, we may want to disobey the meter, or we may wanna select where we want to meter the scene. For example, this is what happens when you take an average meter reading of a backlit subject. As you can see, there's two thirds of the image are really bright, one third is really dark. The bright really skews the average so that what the subject actually is, is too dark. If you've been shooting film for a while, you probably have a few photos like this. 
and then it's not our fault. It's because we set the settings that the meter told us to set, or we set the settings until the meter came to the middle and told us it was correct. And it's not wrong. If you take an average of how bright that window is versus how dark I look in contrast, this is uh, what an average exposure would look like. Same, uh, I've tried taking concert photos using a camera with a um, averaging kind of meter. And imagine the scene but flipped. You've got a dark velvet curtain in the background and a subject in a really bright spotlight. Usually your subject is too bright, too blown out to get a sharp image. Um, and you know, the background might not even look great either. So how do we either trick our meter, use our meter to our advantage to get correct exposures when you have uh, an average meter like this? I'll show you a couple tricks to do that. So using the same example of a backlit situation, how can I take a better average meter reading that's not gonna give me an underexposed image? Well, one easy way is to come right up to your subject and take a meter reading of just the skin tone. It would be the same as me walking way up to the camera so that I'm filling more of the frame. Another way to do it if you don't wanna put your camera right in somebody's face is have them put their hand right up to the camera. This is now what the scene looks like if I walk right up to the camera and take a meter reading just here. Um, or if you know I meet the subject kind of halfway and what I did was I blocked the camera with just the area that I want a meter for so that it took a meter reading here and now I've got a much better exposure on my subject. Now the back is still going to be too bright because there is a lot of contrast in the scene but it, this is a lot closer to a proper exposure and this would be a much better looking photo than the one where the camera had taken an average uh, of the entire scene. Same thing will happen if you've got a very bright subject against a black background or a very dark uh, background that's absorbing all the light whereas you have a subject that's reflecting light. So that's one trick is to move your camera to fill it. Now let's say you want to meter for the background. You can actually just have your subject step aside, take a meter reading, have the subject step back in. If you want, for example, a silhouette, you've got a, a nice interesting shape of something against a really nice sky, um, what you would do then is instead of taking a meter reading by pointing the camera at everything, point the camera just up at the sky or just at the light source, take your meter reading, set your settings, and then come back to take the shot that you want. So that's one thing you can do to overcome a backlit subject. Move your camera closer to the subject so that you're filling the viewfinder with the subject rather than trying to get an average that is obviously a little bit skewed, either too dark or too bright. Now another tool you may have in your toolkit, which I actually do on the OM4, plus I have it in some of the more advanced 90s film cameras that I have, is what's called a spot meter. A spot meter will allow you to only measure a tiny little circle area in the dead center of the frame. Um, that would allow me to then, uh, in this case, put that center area just on my subject, set my settings until the meter tells me I'm okay, and then re recompose the image, reframe the image. Um, spot meters are something that most digital cameras have. Um, if you take pictures with your cell phone and you touch different parts of the screen, that's what that's doing, is it's metering just the area that you tap. So this camera has a spot meter, so I could point just the center por portion of my frame at either the window or at my subject, set my settings, and have the, uh, the metering locked on just for that area. That's another way of getting um, a, very, a much more accurate meter reading when an average just would not serve us very well. Um, it's, also, it's also useful for when you have to meter just off the palm of a hand, especially when you're at this kind of a distance. Now, everything I've mentioned so far applies to when you're shooting completely manually, meaning you're setting the shutter speed and aperture yourself. And of course, you're setting the ISO yourself because if you're shooting film, you chose the film that you put in there, and that's the ISO you're stuck with. Um, now, if you're shooting uh, with a camera that won't let you set everything manually, those do exist, 
or maybe you're not comfortable with manual, you're shooting in a fast paced situation where you're letting the camera set the exposure for you, maybe it's setting just the aperture, just the shutter speed or both, that's okay. You will probably have a way to lock the exposure. Um, this feature is called auto exposure lock. In Canon cameras, it looks like a little asterisk button on the back of the camera. On Nikon, it should be labeled AEL. Um, on other cameras, you'll have to consult your manual. I can't think off the top of my head, but either, either an AEL or an asterisk will lock the exposure, which would allow me to point the camera maybe at the sky if that's what I want to meter for, press this button to lock the exposure, and then recompose my photograph having locked the exposure on the, on the sky or on the skin tone, whatever it, um, whatever it may be. So you have spot meters, you have auto exposure lock, and you have just the simple fill the frame with what you want to have properly exposed and you'll get great shots. Another tool you have, and this may be a camera setting where it'll do the work for you, or you can just do it yourself, is what's called bracketing. If you don't want to fuss with what area, if you just want to take the shot, um, does require a little bit more time. But take a shot with the meter telling you you're correct, and then take one that tells you you're a little overexposed, take another one where it tells you you're a little underexposed, and at least then you have three pictures to choose from in case one or two of them are too bright, too dark. Some people will go uh, further and maybe even bracket five images, um, you know, dark, darker, bright, brighter, and one properly exposed or what the camera thinks is properly exposed. Um, that's called bracketing. Some cameras, like I said, will, will have a mode for bracketing and you just tell it how many frames you want, how far apart, a stop apart, two stops apart. Um, but the simple way to do it is just to follow your meter. Shoot one, you know, depending on whether your meter looks like a ruler or a needle, shoot one that says it's correct and then shoot a couple that are incorrect just to give yourself a little bit of room for error. The other thing I want to mention about metering is that meters are calibrated. The calculator and the camera that's measuring all of this, they're all calibrated to a standard. So in theory, if I set my settings with one camera, I should be able to set those same settings on a bunch of cameras and get similar, if not the same looking photos. There's a little bit of variance there, depending on the lens, depending on um, film or digital, definitely a little bit different, depending on the film stock that you're using, um, but also manufacturing variance. So, um, but for the most part, if you meter five cameras, you should get the five cameras giving you the exact same reading uh, and you should get the same photo. The way they're calibrated though is for what's called a middle gray. You may have heard middle gray, 18% gray. That's the calibration setting for these meters. Now if you're, again, if the total sum of bright and dark in your image is the light luminosity equivalent of a middle gray, then you're spot on. But what if most of your image is bright. As you saw, that doesn't work. Same thing happens with black. So because I'm shooting in quarantine and don't have a whole lot of creativity when it comes to props, I grabbed a black lens cleaning cloth and a white piece of paper. And I just want to show you what happens when you meter just for white or just for black. So that was taking a spot meter reading off of something that's white. Notice that the white actually doesn't look very white. It's a little bit dingy. It's a little gray. That's because the meter is calibrated for gray and it will make it gray. So imagine it's not a piece of paper, but a nice snowy scene. Yeah, maybe you're up at Tahoe and you take a meter reading off of the snow. You're going to get pretty dark, dingy pictures. So metering off of white is one of the situations where you would want to actually disobey the meter and intentionally overexpose it. Otherwise, your, gray, your whites will look gray. Similar thing happens if I take a spot meter reading off of something that's black. This is a black um, 
microfiber, so it's very absorbent of light. It's not reflective at all. But look at how overexposed the scene is. My black t-shirt doesn't look black anymore. The black cloth doesn't look black anymore. It looks gray. So if you're trying to take a picture of something that's a majority black or that is black, you're not going to get black unless you, again, disobey the meter, take it to the negative side, and intentionally underexpose the scene. This is why black and white or something the reflectivity equivalent, so maybe instead of white we're talking about a silver car that's very reflective, or maybe instead of black we're talking about a brown leather jacket that has the equivalent uh, light absorption or light reflection property, you're not gonna get a very good meter reading. That's when you'll want to specifically meter uh, a skin tone or something that, the, something that is the color and reflectivity equivalent of middle gray, not white, not black. Um, this is why if you've ever heard of a gray card, this is great. A gray card is uh, sometimes a literal piece of cardboard, but it's already been coated in a middle gray that is absorbing and reflecting a middle tone so that if you have nothing in the scene, if your scene is so many different light sources and colors that you don't really know where the middle gray is, but you know that you've got to nail the exposure, you would hold up, just like I held up the white piece of paper and the black um, cleaning cloth, you could hold up a gray card to your camera, take your meter reading off of it, um, meaning you point it at the camera, set your settings until it gives you a proper reading, you would get a great exposure because that is the gray that your meter is actually calibrated for. Now most cameras, as soon as you point it, the meter already starts working. You set your settings until the needle goes wherever you need it to go. Some cameras do operate the meter by pressing halfway down first. So if you're using, especially electronic cameras, so if you're pointing it around and you're not seeing that uh, meter ruler looking thing or the needle, whatever you may have, if you're not seeing it move, give your shutter release a halfway down press and you should see it start to react. Um, if it's not reacting even then, then maybe you've got to check your batteries or something like that. But for the most part, your meter should start working as soon as you start pointing it at different light sources or light conditions. So I hope that's been helpful um, to review. Your meter lives in your camera. It's measuring the light entering the lens, and it's going to guide you to set your settings to where you get a, a proper exposure. And the way it lets you know is you either have a, a, a ruler of some kind with a notch that moves, or you might have a needle that moves. And when it's pointed at some kind of middle setting, some of them have a zero, some of them have a dot to tell you you're correct. Once you've got it there, the camera's telling you those are the correct settings. And it only works while you're pointing at your subject. It's only measuring what it sees. So you can't point your camera down at the floor, set your settings, and then bring it up and take a picture because the floor might not be the same light level as what your subject actually is. The other thing to remember is most cameras just have an averaging meter, so it sees everything it sees and takes an average. In a lighting situation like this, where there's more light um, than there is dark, the average will be a little bit skewed toward all that brightness and the dark might be too dark. You don't want to take a meter reading off of something that's 100% white or 100% black or 100% uh, bright reflective, 100% black or dark absorbing, uh, absorbent of light because you won't get a correct exposure, meter, uh, exposure reading either. Um, and if you don't have a spot meter, which measures very specific portions of the scene, then the best way to get a correct meter reading is to fill the frame with what the subject is to get a better meter reading. So you either move your camera right up to your subject, you fill the frame with your subject, blocking out the other parts of the scene or blocking out whatever uh, might be giving you a, a wrong reading. Sometimes if your scene is something like a landscape, just pointing the camera up at the sky or down at the ground to exclude the sky or to exclude the dark areas is enough to get a, a correct meter reading. Now, 
if you don't have a gray card, don't know where in the scene to take a proper meter reading, then another tool you can use is bracketing, where you take multiple images, one that, uh, one where the meter is telling you you're correct, and then maybe one or two that are too bright, and another couple that are too dark. Then at least you'll have enough images to choose from that uh, you kind of have a margin of error to work with. I hope this has been helpful. Let me know if you have any questions.